Tracy from Purple Cats Quilting. Tracy from Purple Cats Quilting. Welcome to the box bag so along with the cats. Um, this is something that I've been talking about for a couple weeks and I finally um, have an opportunity to um, show you how to do this. So there are many videos out there on how to make a box bag. There are many techniques, many sizes. Just by adjusting the size of your um, fabric, you can get all different kinds. Like these are ones I made last year. I made that out of vinyl with fabric inside. Don't do that for your first one because it's hard to turn because vinyl isn't as pliable as um, as fabric. Another idea, if you're using vinyl, you can't put the thermalam fleece on it, so you put the fleece on the lining to give it the structure. So there's lots of different things you can do. If you have any questions, give me a, send me an email. Um, you put little tabs on, it helps you pick up the bag and carry it around. It also makes it easier to open and close. Um, this one, I went crazy with the size of the tabs and then it looked like it had rabbit ears, so I just used a rivet to make them smaller. And on my sample that I did the other night, I got all done and <laughs> no tab, oh no. So when I get to that spot today, um, when I'm showing you, somebody yell at me, don't forget the tab, don't forget the tab. So anyways, I just wanted to share this with you. This is from Dr. Jody Carrington. Um, I know that so many of us are unsettled with what's going on right now, but we just got to keep moving forward because that's just what we do. So I wanted to share that. So a couple things. Um, we have kitted up kits to make it easy for you. Um, we taught this class here last year, um, just like a morning class or whatever. We had so much fun teaching it. Um, so I already have kind of a supply list written up that goes with the kits and kind of general instructions. And then you'll also have access to this video. So we did up five different um, colorways and stuff. We did it in line works with the mineral lining. And so those are on the website. So this is what a kit looks like. And I'm just gonna show you what comes in it. You get your outline, your instruction, you get a zipper with a tab on it. You get, this is gonna be your little tabs that you're gonna put in the end to pull. It's the brand new Tula Pink Renaissance ribbon. Then you get your choice of what cute little animal you want. So here's a lemur and every animal has a different lining color. That's right. The thread does not come with it. That's just an example. I'm gonna talk about thread color later but um, it doesn't come in the kit. So you get your outside two pieces, your inside two pieces. You get four pieces of SF-101 and two pieces of Thermalam fleece. And it's all pre-cut to the sizes that you need. So that's pretty slick in a kit. You can take this kit and just put it away until you want to sew because it's all ready to just go and sew. So we have lots of those. Lots of people have been ordering one of every color to have. That's kind of cool. We also have the designer ribbon packs and the ribbon on the bolt. We have a little bit left. We've used quite a bit actually with these kits. Um, but we have these packs. It has pieces of the ribbon of every different one. Plus we have it on the bolt. So that's available. So of course, Oh, I wanted to talk about thread color. That's why I had them here, because it kind of remem reminds me of um, thread color. When we're sewing, we're gonna be using a zigzag technique to finish off the inside of the bag. And so I always choose to use the thread that matches the inside, and then I top stitch in that pretty color. So that's just, you can look for maybe a purple or a blue or lime green, pink, whatever. Um, I match it. Some people, when we were doing classes, they did it totally opposite or they used a variegated thread. They wanted it to show and it looked pretty too because zigzag stitch looks good. So when in your kit again, you get your outside, your inside. I'm doing up today's sample in not a meowst. Remember this? There are eight kits left on the website. I made them up just now and they are there. If you've already ordered kits and you wanna add one, just go in and add it and do the pickup option and we'll add it to your order. 
So we've got the cats. And we've got Allison Glass Holiday. And we're going to have a rose gold zipper. So that's the sample I'm making up today. So you get your two outer, your two inner, your SF-101, and your Thermalam fleece. So we get out our pieces. They should be pre-cut for you. Um, just check your sizes against your pattern because they're cutting quite a few kits. But when you get your outside, you're going to go over to the ironing board and you're going to put your SF-101 on first on all the pieces. Lining and outside all get SF-101. And then the outside also gets a layer of Thermalam fleece. So let's go do that real quick, just so you see how that's done. Because sometimes we have brand new bag makers, SF-101, like steam. And you want to be checking to make sure that you've got a good bond. So I've got my outside fabric. And this is something that I do, even if a pattern doesn't call for it. SF-101 is a woven interfacing. with a fusible so you can see i'm making sure i get lots of heat i sometimes go to the other side you want a good fuse if you and you want to use a good quality product and in interfacing i use sf 101 that's like a trademark name but it's never let me down i've seen some interfacings that you buy that make your fabric wrinkly and I don't like those. So this is Thermalam fleece. It's fusible on one side also. So can you see how when we pre-cut these pieces that I've got fabric, SF-101 and Thermalam fleece, and there's a bit of a margin there. That is the way it's supposed to be, okay? If you get it and go, gee, they cut my stuff funny. No, they didn't. They cut it exactly the way it's supposed to be. So just check your measurements of all of your stuff against the outline that I've given you. And I'll tell you why we're doing that. When you're in bag making, you have lots of layers. See, I'm going a little bit slower to get that fleece on better. Because it's the one that sometimes I have to double check. So now I really have, um, there's nothing really there but fabric. The fleece isn't in my sewing seam allowance. So that'll make it a lot easier going through layers on um, a, what I call a domestic machine. Some, the Berninos will sew through just about anything, but when we were doing classes, I modified this a little bit just, just for this reason, so that um, people who had smaller machines and just a regular foot could, could do it also. So we're gonna put the three layers here. We're gonna put on the lining. the SF-101. So the lining gets SF-101. I put SF-101 on every piece of fabric that I put in a bag. It prevents it from stretching. It will make your bag last, look long, nicer, longer. Fabric will stretch over time and bags get lots of heavy stuff in them or pulled and whatever. I always have SF-101. Another note when you're cutting your fabric this fabric's directional and your pieces are 10 by 13. So the first one we cut actually was the wrong way. Um, so just remember that directional, this is the side of your bag, this is the top. Um, you want your design to be going this way. Okay, just like our little kitties here. Okay, so that's the first step, isn't that easy? So the next step I'm going to show you, we had somebody actually phone the other day and somebody was trying to tell them how to put a zipper pull on a zipper. Because you can buy a zipper by the yard. There's lots of zippers. I'm going to bring them over there. There's lots of different options for zippers. Oh, maybe come over here, Courtney. I'll just show my hardware bucket real quick. So bag makers, this is nothing compared to what some bag makers have. This is just my little stash at home if I decide to make something. There's all kinds of hardware and all different colors. Um, there's tags, there's labels, there's... And so one thing, you can buy a zipper like this. 
and it's $9.30, which is a good price for a nice, beautiful rainbow zipper. Um, we carry those a lot. But you can also buy zipper by the yard, and different companies make it. So we'll go back over here. Um, you can buy it like three yards for like ten dollars, and then you can pick your zipper pull. And so we buy most of our zippers, zipper by the yard from Emmeline Bags. They're out of Spruce Grove. We sell and stock their stuff here. Um, but you can also go on their website and check them out. She has lots of beautiful hardware. Lots of beautiful hardware. So here's one of her rainbow zippers. And I hear, I just found out that she's also got rainbow pulls now. I did not know that. So I got to get on the website and look. Usually on the rainbow or iridescent, I put silver or gunmetal. But I hear that she has rainbow, so I have to get some of those ordered. Another one that I really like are her copper ones or rose gold. Um, and she also has these little heart ones like that. They're my favorite. She has skulls and then the regular. So when you're buying zipper by the yard, it's like three yards long. What's nice about that is if you've got a bag where you need an eight inch zipper, you cut it off, you make the zipper. Then you might need a 22 inch zipper that wraps around that needs two poles. So you can put two poles so they meet in the middle. There's so many things, and the pulls are usually around $10. The zipper's around $10, so for $20, you get three yards of zippers. So many different combinations. When you start making bags a little bit more, that's how you're going to buy it. But for today, we've provided you with 15 inches of zipper and a zipper pull. And I'm just going to show you how to put that on. Nancy threaded all of them on for you, but there's a couple ways. So I put that one on there first to get it started and I put the other one in there and then all you really need to do is be able to grab that. See how my fingers are? Whoops, of course. It's always hard doing stuff live. All you have to do is be able to grab that other side to hold it. So when you pull down on the pull, it just feeds along. Just like that. I'm gonna show you another way that I know of. So another way that I know of is I cut about a quarter inch of teeth off, okay, on one side. This gives us that piece to hold on to a lot easier. So I thread my zipper on. Just kind of hold it. And then I stick this in there and see now, look at when I've cut those few teeth off, I've got a better, that one went on way easier for me. That's how I usually do it. And I've given you an extra inch and a half of zipper because then you'll always, I like to just give a little bit. You know me, I like to just give a little bit extra. And then you'll definitely still have what you need for your whip. So that's as easy as it is to put your pull on. I like the second way better. That's the way I usually do it. So now the first step that we're gonna do, and everybody's always nervous about this, is we're gonna put in our zipper. And that's what's nice about this pattern is we're, put, we're not fitting a zipper in, we're putting the zipper in first before we sew it together, okay? So I always have to remember how to do this. I've got a couple checks. There's some tools that we use in bag making. I love my glue stick. You saw we were using glue sticks before for um, making our rope bags. And I just went, I found glue sticks. They were four for, what was it, $3 or something like that at the dollar store. So that's what I bought. I love having clips. So we put the cats right side up. That's the outside of the fabric. We're gonna lay our zipper down. And if you wanna put a little row of glue stick, you can. Just pull my zipper down a little bit. And I'm just gonna center that C. We've got lots. Then I like to clip it. So I clip it as I go. I love clips. 
to hold it in place. It helps that glue kind of catch. And then we're gonna take a lining. And again, this is the top, so my cat's gotta be up. This is the top, so my giraffe is to be up. And I could run a little bead of glue along there. And this glue stick is kind of nice too. We line up our sides and then we line up the top and then I just redo my clips. And there, that's easy. There's our sandwich with our zipper in it. The one thing you're gonna wanna just double check always, just open it up and have a peek and make sure the right side is near the top, okay? Because um, if you put your zipper in upside down, you'll be sad because you have to take it out, but it's not a big deal. Happens all the time. Ask me how I know. So now we're going to come over to our sewing machine. Oh, sorry, I'm really, really stiff. So um, I usually sew with this foot here. I love the, which one is it? I like the 97D actually is one of my favorites. But I've got to put my zipper foot on. So there's what a zipper foot looks like. Everybody's looks a little different. That's a Bernina zipper foot. So I put that on. One thing about the Bernina, um, these 570s, 770s, they have this dual feed. So I got this little clip at the back. Uh, got this little clip at the back here. It's 4D. Machine's gonna ask me to switch it up here. There we go. It likes it when I tell it what foot I'm using. And so, this dual feed is in the back. It works like a walking foot. It's kind of built right in. It helps push all the layers together. So when you get going on a, on multiple layers, it just is really helpful. I've also wound a couple bobbins because I Do know that, table? what's that? Maybe, I know that um, I'm zigzagging, so I might use extra thread. And here's my tabs, everybody. Make sure I add those in at the end, okay? So I think I'm ready to go. So with your zipper foot, what it does, and on these wide zippers, we just I just usually use the width of my zipper foot. Um, see, my needle is going, um, my zipper is going down, but what I want my needle to do is be on the left side. Right? That's the reason we use a zipper foot. And with my Bernina, I just use the width of the zipper foot as my seam allowance. So it's about a, I'd say three eighths inch seam, okay? You don't wanna get too close to those teeth because then you can't open your zipper. <laughs> All these things that I've learned. So when I'm doing my first stitch, I always hand roll it because even though I've moved my foot over, I just want to make sure that my machine knows that that's where I want to be because I don't want to break a needle. And now I'm just going to sew down the side. And you've seen me use my stiletto lots. So I've got my zipper sandwiched in there. I'm just going to pull these clips as I go. Now I can feel that zipper pull. So I always sew with needle down position. So I'm gonna lift up my foot, my foot, leave my needle in, right? Cause then nothing will move. And see over here, Courtney, if you can just show them, see where my zipper head is in there? I'm gonna slide it back. I'm not gonna slide it all the way back that it comes off. Cause that wouldn't be, that wouldn't be good. I don't want that to happen. But we're just gonna get it out of the way. Now that big bump is gone. And now I'm back sewing again. So again, just pull this all over. The stilettos, a stiletto or um, your seam ripper, anything, anything but your fingers to help you feed everything in nice and clean. So I hope everybody's having a good day. What a beauty day out there again, holy. Sounds like this weather is just gonna be fabulous for the next week at least so there you go that's that's as easy as one side is a little bit of a wow there but I can fix that with my press so now I'm going to go I could top stitch this now 
Um, but I'm just going to go and put the other side on first. Okay, so it's exactly the same technique. So lay my outside fabric right side up, top here, run my glue, take the front and put them together, right? Line up the sides and get that zipper tape up there and clip them. And then my lining, that's the top again. My lining up here. Yeah, yeah my giraffe's going the right way. And a little bit of glue up there just to hold it in place. Line up the sides. So this is a nice, easy, quick sew. You can just use pieces of fabric out of your stash. I'm going to show you the simple technique of zigzagging the lining. I will also do an additional video after to show you how to bind it. I won't do it in this one because I just want you, if you've never made one before, I want you to just try it the first this way first. So again, put my needle down, and away I go. And can you see how that foot kind of walks along in the back there? Look at it. So it's working like the feed dogs up top. So it takes the place of a walking foot. I've never used a walking foot because with this built-in. So most of the Bernina feet will have a D after them if they've got that hole for your dual feet. So if you have an option to buy one with a D, that's the one you want. So again, I'm going to just move that zipper head back out of the way. Just makes it smooth sewing. been sewing with me what's the next step we always do heat press but a lot of these zippers are not made of metal it makes them more pliable and not as stiff in our bags so that means that they might be made out of something like plastic we got to be very careful when we've got our iron up there okay so can you see that I'm pulling everything away from my zipper I want a good hard press line. I want my fabric. I'm pressing it away from my zipper. I have touched my zipper before. Um, I don't have any problems. I do it fast, but I've heard stories where people have melted their zippers in their last stage. They're pressing up their bag really nice and shht, and if you melt those zipper teeth, they're not gonna move anymore. So you can see that I'm pulling the fabric away from the zipper, getting it nice and flat and just running my iron along there. And I'm gonna do that on both sides. You know me, I like to use some Best Press or some Acorn Pressing Products, some starch. Again, see how I'm just pulling it away. On both sides. And then we're gonna to go top stitch that down. Top stitching will hold this lining. If, if you ever buy a jacket that's not well constructed, and your zipper's always getting caught in the fabric going up and down, that's because it's probably not been top stitched along the zipper. So it's a very important construction technique. We're gonna top stitch like from the other side, but it's gonna have a row of stitching that's gonna hold that fabric away from the zipper. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna go do now. And you can still use your zipper foot if you want don't really need to on this wide zipper but I'm going to just to show you 
And top stitching in bag making is about a core, what is it, an eighth of an inch seam or so away from the edge. And sometimes you want to use a fancy seam. Um, I could use the number six. It's like a triple stitch on my Bernina. We could try that. I could show you that. It's really pretty. Got this. What's that? Yeah, see, see, see what happened? You have to move your needle over. Yeah. My needle moved over. So I don't really want that because it'll hit my foot. Okay. So a triple stitch goes one, two, three, one, two, three. What I like about it is it puts a lot of thread in there. So if I've got a pretty thread, like when I did the skunk bag there, the little stinker, I used hot lime thread. Just nervous. Okay, so. So when you're embroidering, you're really just letting the machine do the work, okay? You don't want to be pushing and pulling because it will be unhappy. Just let it move back and forth. Those feed dogs and the computers, they know what they're doing. If you don't want to do a fancy stitch there or something like this, just open up your stitch length. It's something that bag makers do. If you look at, start looking at bags that you've bought in the store, they always have a bigger top stitch. It's just pretty. It just makes it look nice. There's more thread. We use glide thread for bag making. It's 100% polyester. It's very strong. And it's got a really nice sheen to it too. So I'll show you what that looks like. See, I got that pink thread that matches mine. I wanna make sure it didn't slip up. It's pulled it away good. If it were had to slipped up, I would just pull that stitch and redo it because I don't want my fabric close to my zipper teeth. So that's pretty, it, it puts that pink in there. And of course, see, I've got it to match the inside. So when I do my zigzagging, it matches. So now I'm just gonna do that on the other side quick. Again, make sure my fabrics are pulled away from my zipper. little kitties are so cute. I found two meters of this fabric and so I thought well I will put it into little box bag kits because I know there was a couple people that really wanted to get it. So you could make a cute little box bag or you could buy the box bag kit just for the fabric but it is pre-cut up to make the bag in these little kits. Lori and Nancy worked just about all day to make up the kits that were ordered already. Courtney's been putting all the new fabric onto the shelf that arrived. Alice and Glass is pretty fabulous. All right, so there you go. If you're afraid you're gonna pull your zipper off the end, you could do a stitch across your zipper teeth, a big stitch. You gotta be careful that you don't hit those teeth right on. Um, I need a zigzag, so I guess it's I'm going to be doing some zigzagging, so I'm going to just put on a foot that allows me to do that. Also, make sure you got your zigzag plate on. It's got the wider opening at the bottom. There's two kinds of plates for Bernina. One has what they call the single stitch plate, and that's used a lot. It's It gives you more precise sewing, and you know how sometimes when you start, how the the fabric will get sucked down into the bigger hole. It doesn't in this. This is a stitch plate you use for embroidery too. So yes, Courtney just went in 1D. So we'll tell my machine, hey, I put the 1D on for you. Okay, I'm just gonna go back to regular stitch length. Yeah, 
There you go. So just clear that. So there you go. So if you wanted to put a little bit of thread at the end of every zipper, um, zipper side, you could. I usually, when I go over zippers, I walk over them. Um, what that means is I'm using my hand roller. And if it hits a hard piece, I move it. Some people are very confident, but the other night I broke three needles in 10 minutes, so it was just like. So what that does is it just allows you, to, just stops you from pulling that off by accident is all, okay? All right, let's see what's next. Oh, gotta think about this for a minute. Let's see, I'll check my cheat sheet. Fly zip into both sides and top stitch. Sew bottom closed and trim. So that's this. So I'm gonna put them together. And I'm gonna sew the bottom closed. Okay. So see, I've got that nice seam allowance in there. It's not going to be too thick. I could clip it. I could pin it. Probably just throw a couple clips in there. So I'm going to sew it closed, and then I'm going to zigzag it. So quarter inch seam as best I can. Just want to be able to catch all the layers in that. Okay. Go back over, I'm going to show you a little trick. So first of all, we're just going to sew our quarter inch seam. Again, my stiletto just helps hold this down so it doesn't kind of run out of my way. Okay, so the only other thing I just want to make sure that I have got the outside fabric caught in there because sometimes I've clipped it and zigzagged and I've missed it, but I can see that it's showing in my seam allowance, so that's good. And it's a nice thin seam allowance because that thermal arm fleece is still a little ways away. So it's gonna make it really easy to do. So here's something I like to do because I like my seam allowances to look nice and I'm not, you know, they're cut a little bit rough and everything. After I've sewn it, I go and I just trim it to that quarter inch. And of course I've used the same color of thread, so you know, that's gonna be interesting. But I just trim it up, just a teeny tiny hair, like squaring up a block, right? So that when I have that zigzag seam, it's gonna look nice, because you are gonna see it in the bottom of your bag. So I'm gonna go back. And I like to use a wide zigzag a wide zigzag, so I make it wider, not longer, wider. I probably go up to like 5.4, I want it wide, but I want it dense too. So I think those are pretty good numbers. It's kind of the number I was using, I think that was really close to what I was using the zigzag when I was making those bowls. So now I'm gonna run it along and it's gonna catch that unfinished edge and what the zigzag is going to do is just finish it off so it doesn't fray in my bag and that is actually why these bags are just such a quick project because we're not putting binding on them and stuff because in traditional bag making you do put some binding on so that looks pretty good actually i like like i said trimming it off first does I think help with the finished look and like in our class some people chose to use variegated thread and make it part of the design element okay back to my instructions so bottom trim zigzag add tab oh yeah here's the tab thing so can you see how 
maybe one edge is a little bit wider than the other or maybe my things don't meet up and you know what I don't worry too much about that I use my ruler at the bottom and square it and I just trim off that little bit because really all I want to be able to do is get a good quarter inch even seam there trim off that little bit extra there it just comes from putting in your zipper and it's I've given you a good size you're not you're not taking off a lot you're just trimming it so it's easier to sew okay all right so add tab fold bottom up to the zipper so fold the bottom up to the zipper and this is where my tab goes in and this is always where I forget to put it so let's go get that usually I make a little tab out of fabric and it sits on the outside so I usually make the tab the same color as the lining just for that pop of color but I cut you because it just came in yesterday Renaissance ribbon for your kit to use for your tab so you fold it and the rough edges go along there go along they face it the good piece faces into the middle of the bag okay then we're going to take the other side of our zipper we're going to just overlap it a teeny tiny so that matches up with the bottom seam allowance okay and then we go out here and we clip and we clip and you can see now again you'll be able to feel that there's a good seam allowance there where i don't have a lot of bulk so that's a good thing so let's do that on the other side I'm going to put our stitch back to regular stitch. Get my tab in there. So again, I just center it there. Center the zipper over that seam on the bottom. And clip it. And then make sure I got all these layers pulled up together. And if you need to do a bigger than a quarter quarter inch seam allowance to catch all of those in, it's okay. Because again, we're going to do exactly what we did here. We're just going to trim a little bit off before we zigzag. So I think I need to probably do about a three eighths inch seam here. So that's what I'm going to do. Got my thing set back to normal. my stiletto in there and sort everything out because my fabric's curling there do you see that I'm gonna do about a three inch seam I'm going through a few layers including one of them being the zipper so what am I doing I'm gonna just walk that over the zipper if my needle hits it it will deflect one way or the other if I'm going slow so if you know you can just power over zippers, I'm still pretty careful because my machine's pretty new. And and then here, same thing. I can probably make one of these in 20 minutes. So they're a nice quick gift. What I want is this zipper to be kind of overlapping just a little bit. Oh, oh, I didn't walk my zipper over. Look at that. Dang it. Do as I say, not as I do. Crappers. All right. Well, it happens. I just happen to have a whole bunch of needles here. If you're going through lots of layers, and you're having difficulty, like maybe skip stitches or something. Like I'm just using a basic needle. I know somebody said, oh, when do you change your needle? Hmm. I don't usually change my needle a lot. I use a basic quilting needle, unless I'm starting to have trouble. So like a denim needle is a bigger needle and it will make a bigger hole to carry your thread through. These different needles, there's sharp needles that have a real pointy 
they're made to go through like boutiques and stuff. But anyway, sorry, that was silly. There, we got to go put that in the shark container. So hopefully I can get going again. So again, I was busy talking. So we'll just back up a little bit. Walk it over like I told you to do. And again, this little group is always about sharing tips and tricks. So if you have a tip or trick that you'd like to put in the comments, I'd like to share with this group. We'd appreciate it. So again, I'm going to go over and I'm going to trim that. And then I'm going to zigzag it. So just trim it down nice and a quarter inch. On both sides. Have you, Courtney, you've made box bakes, haven't you? Uh -huh. Yeah. A lot. I like making them. Last year I probably made, oh, I just couldn't stop. It was like, Oh, look at my machine remembered what I was doing so that's good I remembered my zigzag stitch so that's nice again I like a nice dense zigzag stitch it's almost like an overlock stitch you know really that's kind of what it's doing yep when he's reminding me to use my hand wheel when I get close to my zipper Not one mark. All right, there we go. So it's almost like an overlock stitch, you know, if you had a serger or overlock. It would give you that nice finished edge. It doesn't fray. But on the other side, we're almost done, you guys. Can you believe it? Always want to leave your zipper open so that you can turn your bag inside out. Live videos are great. It's kind of fun to interact. Um, but anything that happens, happens live. There we go. Great. So now you could flip your bag right now. And it would be like a flat bag. It would be like a shoe bag. A slipper bag. A slipper bag. Yeah, it would be cool. Um, yeah, it's kind of a neat shape. I'll just show you before we do our last step. It's actually a neat shape. Look at it. Barbie dolls or iPad. whatever. iPad. Yeah. Pencils and crayons and books for grandkids to take in the car. So it's actually kind of a cool shape. I don't mind it. Actually, I might have to leave one like that. The tabs on the end really help you open and close that zipper, too. And you can see the stitching. But we are going to finish up the box bag technique just to show you. But that is an option. You can make them two. You could make them a flat one and a box bag. So we go back. My notes go. And so the last step is this is a technique in bag making called boxing the corners 
it's cutting out the corners. It's this, oh, it's, it's, really sorry, it's this seam right here. So I've got it laying like this. So I take it, take my hand in, go to the seam, and I'm gonna fold it down, just like that, okay? Then I'm gonna take my ruler, and the Tula Pink four and a half inch ruler works perfect for this, but I'm gonna take my ruler, and I'm gonna measure in. See this is two inches down from the point, two inches. And I know I'm on the right angle because I've got that degree there, two inches in. And I'm gonna draw a line. Use your, use your fabric marker, not your pen, but that's what I have handy. Then I'm gonna clip it. That's gonna be my stitching line. So I'm gonna do that on all four corners real quick, okay? We're gonna stitch that. We're gonna trim it. We're gonna zigzag it and we are done. looking funny there we go so again want that in the middle two inches from the end clip this from one side to the other okay and if you don't want such a tall box you can play around with the size of that but two inches is the one we've always used so and back stitch other side. So we do that on all four corners. So I'm going to go measure the other one. See how it's cutting off and turning it into a box now. So that's pretty cool. So again, stick your finger in make a point, center it, and we're cutting, we're going two inches deep from the corner on that line. Gotta get it nice and centered. Good. Use a clip just to hold it. You can pin it too if you like. And then here, Again, draw our line, our sewing line. Gonna go over and sew it. And I like the Thermalam fleece in these bags. It gives it lots of structure. There's so many different um, interfacing things that you can use. Thermalam fleece is one of my favorites because it's still it's still bendable. It's still it's still pliable, but it gives lots of structure, nice soft structure. Um, Thermalam fleeces, we, we sell and recommend, I recommend a lot of beginner bag makers try out Emmeline Bag's free retreat bag pattern. That's on her website, um, and we do kits and stuff here. But it's where I send them when they're just starting because she writes a really good pattern. And it uses the fleece, so it just is so easy. So now I could take scissors and trim this, or I can use my ruler and just measure quarter inch and be very careful and cut it. And what were we using these for? <laughs> Wasn't it nose things or something? I don't know. There was a few different um, well thought out uses for those at retreat one weekend, one, one time. You can just imagine. Oh, I know. Wasn't it Wendy Litke, a peepee -pee tent? <laughs> Who was it? I can't remember. Oh, there was lots of them. Courtney doesn't want me to say now because she remembers. She just won't tell you. Okay, so back to the... We're going to zigzag again. 
This is the last step. And again, I want to just go over that seam and kind of just seal it off. And I've got the same colored thread. So look at that, it looks pretty good, hey? These are great little bags for so many things. I keep like my hardware. I like them because they stack. Um, put my hardware in them. I have one with my clips. Um, I have one with, you know, like if I'm going somewhere and I need like eight spools of thread, it holds it. They're so useful for so many things. You could make somebody a little bag like this. You know, Christmas was, you're not going to take away Christmas from our hearts, right? And Christmas is all about giving. And maybe you just want to give your neighbor something. Like maybe you uh, want to give them, I don't know, if you do baking or whatever. If you baking, you could give them a little gift. This could be a little gift bag. You know, they're a nice, quick sew, which is always nice for gifts and stuff. Oh, those cats are so cute. Courtney's wearing her mask that matches these cats today. All right, so there it is. We are done, the sewing part. Now I just want to talk to you about a couple other things. I just threw a few tools out here that I always use. Um, bag making, I have these cute uh, chopsticks. Carmen bought me those because she was embarrassed when we ate out, so she'd always say, bring my mom a fork, and then she got us these, so at least we could practice. But I use these in bag making and stuff to push out corners, and especially when I'm in smaller things where I need to push out, I use chopsticks or something. A pen, I used to use a pen, and then you'd get ink all over, or the point would go through little chopsticks they work good so that's something that's in my bag making another thing especially when you're doing vinyl you're not supposed to touch your iron to this i play um iron chicken um you don't want to touch this because this is like plastic right that vinyl cork uh they say don't press cork either i have very quickly with a pressing cloth so again i'm telling you what they tell you to do don't do what I do. So I have this seam roller, Violet Craft seam roller, and it is great for when you're sewing with cork and vinyl because you can flatten your seams without an iron. So it's used actually for foundation paper piecing, but lots of sewers find it's very useful beside their machine because as they're sewing, instead of getting up and pressing all the time, they just flatten out their seam till the end of the block. So I just had that in my bag making stuff I wanted to show you. The other thing that I have for bag making, did I made this cute little iron holder before. It all folds up around my little tiny baby iron so I can take it with me, but it also has a pressing mat built right in. And that's a pattern that comes with this. These little irons are the greatest things. They are so snapping hot. Holy man. Um, but that's what you want sometimes. I made my this is actually my pressing mitt, because you know me, I don't cook. Um, this is my pressing mitt, because it's got that thin slate and everything in it. So if I'm pressing my bag, and I want to get some shape, because that's what we're going to talk about now, is it looks pretty darn good, right? But there's a few bubbles and stuff. The last step in making a bag is always a good press. And I know Tara talks about pressing She'll press for half an hour. So you can take your little mat mitt and you can press. So you can hold it there. You can get some shape. Because this iron's not going to fit inside this bag. But this little one will help me get some shape. And something else that I found one day is this helps me get my corners. 
these little tiny wool mats. I love wool mats. There is something about a wool mat. It's like pressing from both sides, they say. So now I've used my pressing product inside. I'm actually gonna put my iron right in there and press out my corners nice. So it's what bag makers do. They open up each other's bags and they look inside at the pressing job. So pressing is just as important a step as the sewing. So that's something that, what's that? The one corner, I didn't get it. Yeah, but I will. I'll work on this. It probably, so you can see how nice and smooth and it actually, that little bit of starch in there, it, it, it firms it up. It, it gives it a little bit more shape. You can see how this one has more shape than this. But this one will look just as good once I'm done pressing it. See, the, they're a little loose inside. But once I've pressed that, it will look just like this. So here's the one where I've used the binding on the seams. It's an extra step takes a little bit more for your machine to get through there. You're just making a binding, like binding a quilt, and you're binding over the seam. But this one doesn't look too bad. It's the way we've always made them. And they're sturdy and everything. So that's, I recommend you make one like this. They're nice and fast. Make one like this first before you play with trying to bind your seams. So let me see, I think that's, just about everything. Um, I hope that you like that presentation. And um, if you have any questions, you can post them here. I'll go home and check them tonight. If there's anything you've seen that you have a question about, just put them here too. And have a great day.